welcome back to my channel it's Angela here again um, I hope that you've all been able to find something to keep yourselves entertained I've seen so many exciting things that people are doing families especially um, on social media so I hope that you've all been very creative and managed to keep in touch with people and had a laugh as well um, today I'm going to take up a challenge that Dawn, Dawn Sutton sent me, one of my subscribers. Hello Dawn, um, she said to me, can you make something with CD envelopes? Um, so I have actually done something with that today. So Dawn, I hope this is the kind of thing that you were thinking about. Um, so this is what I've done. Um, I've used two CD envelopes um and i have used my scraps here um so they don't really look like cd envelopes because i've taken away the circle um and i've decorated each one um so we've got that on that side and we have a similar type of a thing on the other side um this one i've sewn around um and then what i've done is and what did i do with that page that i wanted to use no, it's eluding me. Oh wait, here it is. Sorry. <laughs> um, the the pro here's a page example. What what I was thinking of doing really is being able to put that over two pages. So you've got that like that, and then when you turn over that page, you've got an image on the back as well. So it's like dangled over a page. So that's what I was thinking of there. And then um, what I did was, obviously, I've got a, a journal cards that I have in there, like that, um, on both sides, um, because you'd have to open these on the same side. And then also when you open it up, I've just put in, to keep it as thin as possible, a little vellum um, or tracing paper you could use, a little pocket here, and just put in two pieces of ephemera and I've tried to keep this background quite muted so that if you wanted to write on there you could as well so that's what we're going to make today um, so um, hopefully uh, you could do this with some of your CD um, envelopes or sleeves all right so that's what we're going to try today so first of all what you need is let's just put that page away um, you're going to need two of these to make one. So th these are the standard um, CD sleeves or envelope things. Um, and what we're going to use here is we're going to use some of the scraps that we have in our um, scrap box. So what I've done is, and, and I do have a load of scraps, I've tried to pull together pieces that are quite muted. So if you have a look at these, they're all pretty muted and I have torn them about an inch wide. So that's what I've done there. Um, and I've just, I'm going to use those. So nothing's going to really stand out um, because I'm going to make um, the decoration on the sleeve and behind stand out so that's what my thinking was there and we all have piles of scraps and of course we want to sort of reduce those and not make them go to waste so I thought instead of printing out more pages I'll, I'm, wherever possible I wanted to try and use up some of these scraps so all I've done is I've torn four strips one to fit on each side I'm gonna sort of sh shingle those as I go um, was a bit of a, a puzzle putting them together not that it was hard it was just that I had to remember not to glue right to the end <laughs> so that was the, the the challenge so I did manage to get it right in uh, by the time I did the second one so hopefully I don't forget that now all right so I'm just putting a never so lightly light dusting of some distressed ink on there like that and now it's just a case of working out what I want where so I think what I want to do is that's a short one so, and I quite like that writing so I think I'll probably have that one over there 
um, this one I might have at the bottom. Just looking at which way these letters go. So that I'll probably put there. And this writing's this way. This one's okay. So I'm gonna tuck that under there and make that lap over there like that. And then I'm gonna put that one there. And I quite like that little design there. So we'll have a little bit of that writing stick out like that. So that's as easy as pie. So it's just a case of um because each one is lapping, it becomes a bit tricky, but once we started with the first one, it'll be fine. So let's just do that. So this is not difficult today at all. It's really simple, straightforward stuff. But I quite like how it's turned out. And um, I think on those pages in your journal, which you want to keep for writing, but you still want some kind of decoration, this is the way to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move those aside like that. And remember that I've got a bit over there that I need to so that bit I'm going to put my thumb on and then I'm going to glue the rest I'm going to use my um, three in one now you don't have to glue um, glue this <laughs> you do need to glue it but you um, you don't need to sew it um, I did do a little bit of decorative sewing there but it's not a must um just line this up where i want i wanted this one higher see i'm already losing the plot okay so that one needed to be higher and we haven't got that bit covered now before i get to that side see i've already got it all, all wrong I, I need to make a little opening there so what we want to do is get your scissors if that suits you better um we want a place for the tag to go the journal card to slide in so we do want to just oh I nearly I moved that do want to just make an opening on the side and where I um what I needed to remember is that while I'm about it because that's that way and this other one's going to face that way the opening needs to be on the opposite side so let's just do that now while I'm thinking of it because Previous to that, I almost did it on the wrong side, so you don't want to do that. So at least now, when you have these like that, you've got the openings both on the same side. So that's important to remember. But what I also did here, and I'll get to it once I've stuck it down, is I do slit. If you're going to sew, you do need to slit that side. You will come back and stitch around it afterwards if you want to sew uh, around the framework itself. So that's something to bear in mind. Right, so I can stick over this side, but I need to remember to keep that bit um, not uh, without glue on that end. Yep. So there we go. I've got, I'm doing scrap busting ephemera and I think at some point, heaven knows when, I need to take the whole bag and make myself a pile of journal cards and tags. Uh, that one's going to go at the bottom, so that's fine, it's the top. Um, and get rid of this ever-mounting um, bit of scraps, which I know we all have. We really do. Right, so, yeah, that one's going to go like that now we can put some on that end a bit too much really okay okay that one's a little bit long but i'll get there i'll get there at the end okay so that one is going to go underneath and underneath there like that so we can glue the whole one Really, I could have started with this piece, couldn't I? You know, hindsight, sight, an exact science. So we're going to have this bit like that. And then we're going to just lift up this bit. 
and stick these two bits down. So we'll have a little bit over there and a little bit over there. There we go. So let's just get that all stuck down. And there we go. It's as easy as that. I'm um, going to just trim this bit because it's sticking out a little bit too much for my liking. Um, so there we go. There's the front just like that. So now let's just quickly do that with the other one. So this is the other one. Another four pieces quickly. Um, let's quickly think what we want to do. Right, I'm going to put that one's up right there. Uh, this one we can put underneath there. Um, this one we can put there. And this one we can put ooh, mm, we'll put this one here but then the writing will be the funny way around not to worry okay so that's what I'm gonna do there quickly so let's quickly just very swiftly just gonna I love that butterfly there. Just put that on very quickly. And this one. These are all bits from um, antique papery projects that I've been working on with the envelopes. So it wasn't difficult. Right, so that's going to go there, that's going to go there, that's going to go under there. Right, so this is the one to start with. Um, no, I wanted that one on top there. Yeah, this is the one to start with. So let's do this then. Is all mucky. Right. Anybody doing anything exciting at the moment? Um, making any journals or exciting ephemera? Um, what you all been up to? I haven't heard much from people this week. Um, maybe people are back at working from home. Not sure. Um, We seem to be over the peak, the Prime Minister says, so that's a good thing. Um, and they're meant to be letting us know next week um, the process for lifting lockdown. And I don't know how that's going to work, but it, it sounds positive, <laughs> so I'm not complaining. But otherwise, I've been very busy uh, myself. Mostly still with work, um, so I, I think we've got <laughs> a holiday coming up for uh, half term at the end of May. And actually, I know this sounds weird because it seems like we're all on a holiday, but I'm really not. Um, I'm looking forward to it already. So what are you all doing? Right, so there we go. That's all of that done. That's our opening side there. And I'm quite happy with all of that. I'm going to put that on because it's oozing out. Okay, so we've got an opening over here. And like I said to you earlier, we want to um, just slit that side there. So you can cut it with your scissors. I'm going to use my uh, trusty craft knife. Um, and just gently uh, slide the knife slowly and carefully down there so now I've got the whole bit open and the reason I'm doing that is purely because I want to sew around the frame and that's all and then I will sew around the rest of it and leaving one side open um, so let's just quickly do this bit as well uh, so. 
just to remember when you do sew the side up that they do need to be alternate but we'll first focus on that so my way to tackle that is to use two of my little wooden pegs um, so this is just for my own sanity um, and I want it like this so that means if I'm going to hang it over my page depending which side of the page you're going to use um, I'm going to use this side so this side needs to be the open bit and on this one it needs to be this side that's the open bit that's just for me to remember um, when I'm doing that so I need to put it on one of the pieces because I'm going to have to open this up in a minute all right so what I'm going to do quickly is I'm just going to sew around their um, messy stitch around the frame and then I'm going to um, sew around the sides bearing in mind that this is my marker to the side I need to keep open so I'll meet you back here in a tick um, after I've done the sewing okay so what I've done is I have just sewn around the middle bit for a frame um, and before I can sew down the side I actually need to put on the base um, the other side of these uh, CD envelopes so what I'm using here is one of my um, calico collage um, pages from spring um, spring in bloom I think it's called um, which I've used before so this is just one of the backing pages which is quite um, light really and you can still write on here if you wanted to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that on the back there of our envelope so before I do that I just want to quickly very quickly just give it a little bit of a defined edge with some distress ink so what's your favorite color distress ink to use um i'm i find vintage uh, photo quite dark um and I, I prefer quite a light stain really so i've ended up going with memento toffee crunch um and often when i use the light pastels especially the the type of um, digitals that have a lot of white backing like antique paper reuse then i actually use an even lighter one which is by tim holtz called antique linen which is a very subtle shade so i've been interested to know what everybody's favorite is on that front um all right so i'm going to stick these on here really quickly i am going to use my uh, glue stick because i'm going to stitch around the edges but please do whatever suits you if you are going to use um if you are not going to stitch then use um perhaps use a better strength a stronger glue just because i'm not convinced that um glue stick lasts very long um so that's why i say that i've still got my peg on so i know which side is the opening and that's why i've got that on there okay but before i stitch around that i'm first gonna stitch i'm first gonna stitch a line straight down and then close it because that's where my opening is going to be and i can't close that shut then i'm going to stitch the other three sides so every edge will have a uh, have a stitched opening but again that's optional all right so that's the one and then just quickly again uh, take the glue stick stick down the other bit on the other side Abby's not in the room she's sleeping on my bed so she's not here to harass me and she has been so demanding on my time it is unbelievable that dog of mine she's she's like a child wants my attention all the time poor sausage um, i gave her a good run and chased the ball today so i'm hoping she, that's why she's on the bed so early she's probably knackered <laughs> so let's hope she is <laughs> okay i'll see you back here in a minute I'm going to just do the stitching and um then we'll meet back again 
Okay, so here we are. I've stitched, as you can see, here's our opening. It still has a stitched edge on both sides. And I then have stitched all around like that. Um, and this one, which is gonna go that way, again, stitch opening, stitched on all, all sides. So there we have it. Okay, I'm not worried about that, it's gonna get covered. Okay, so now we've done that bit there. If you um, were wanting to put in a piece behind there, a decorative piece like I did over here, um, you know, you can do. That's up to you. I like to do that if it's if it's a blue or like a, a, a normal everyday office window envelope. But these are white, so it's not offensive in any way. But please feel free to do that. And really, you should have done that. You could do it now. It'll work because you've got an opening right here. So that's easy enough. But probably easier when the whole thing is open. All right, so we've got an opening there. We've got our opening here. So what we want to do now is we want to put on this piece over here. So what I have used there is just a piece of calico. So this is a very a nice medium thickness of calico um, that I got off Amazon. Um, it's really a nice quality and quite sturdy, not overly thick, but um, it's what I use. And I tear it for, for what I want. So for the purposes of what we need today, um, we need a, a, a piece that is, just getting my ruler here, um, it's about one, it's a one and a half inches wide. So that's going to be sufficient. If you're wanting that in centimeters, you're looking at about four centimeters. So that's, that's what I've torn off. And the length of this for these um, CD envelopes, sorry, if I can get it open. Um, the piece I have made is double this. So it is 27 and a half centimeters or 10 and a half inches. So that's what I've done here. Double the length of your CD envelope. All right. So just oh, what happened there? <laughs> moving in closer, moving this a little bit out the way. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. Right, so what you want to do now is um, you want to cut this in half because you need a piece for each side of your envelope. So um, as I said, it's double the side uh, size and a smidgen bigger than the envelope. So all I do is cut a little notch like that and rip it. All right, so that's all we need. I like the 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 sort of ruffled edges so that's all right pull off a few bits there just to give me a nice ruffled edge there and that's all what we're going to use so bearing in mind that our openings need to be on the same side um, you don't have to if you don't want to but I think it's easier you don't want to have these opening onto the sewn seam edge the, the the middle you want to have them opening to the edge of the page so that's why I've got them on the same side so what I want to do now is is trim down these flaps we don't need these flaps here so I'm going to just trim them down to about a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter um, so that's what I've done with mine. We do that to both sides. Gosh, I'm full of glue. It's catching glue everywhere, everywhere. Um, and when I go and sit and do something else, I end up picking up all the glue off my fingers. And for some weird reason, I find that quite appealing. Um, right, so we've got that one there. And we have got this one here so we want to match them up like that okay so leave a little bit of a gap in between like a quarter an eighth of an inch an eighth of an inch and then i use some fabric tack glue or something that is going to work with fabric and what you want to do is you want to take your piece and you want to just gauge um, I go like that because I can see through them where the halfway mark is and that tells me that I need to be putting some glue that's not going to exceed that mark um, on both sides of this. So that means I'm going to do that. I'm just going to give it a bit of a 
glue like that and over here as well okay so that's all right um, now what I want to do is I just want to as I said keep the eighth of the inch away because that's going to make it fold properly and then just check that you've got it in the middle um, and I'm luckily because I can see it's dark in between the two um, and then just push that gently over with your fingers now you didn't want to when you put the glue on don't put on too much you don't want it oozing through especially if you've got a thin fabric this is a medium weight so I'm quite happy with that um, you can always trim off the excess when you finish sewing so that's quite fine at the moment I'm quite happy with that right then turn that over gently all right and now we're going to match up this on the other side so again just put some glue you can now see where the edge of the glue needs to go see I'm going to cover up all my stitching that was bunched up when something went wrong with the machine for a minute there I had to re-thread the whole thing as you do um, and then just a thin bead there Okay, so there we've got a decent amount of glue. I'm going to stitch over this. You don't have to if you use this, but um, just make sure you put on enough glue. So we want to just match up the ends now with our finger. Fingers are the best. <laughs> and we just get that all matched up nicely. Yeah, I see all the all the glue drying on my fingers and I did put hand cream on because I heard that that was a good way to not have it but never mind I need to sort out my whole manicure going on here right um so we give that a second to dry so you can see that that's going to um perfect match I'm impressed and um, that's going to do the job like that so that little gap in the middle if you don't leave that eighth of the inch in between the two it's not going to fly um, flat it's going to want to bow up a bit that's why we need to remember to do that so it's so a good eighth of an inch so a good three four millimeters if you're looking in metric okay so now what I want to do is I'm going to stitch um, close to the edge there straight across there and just short of the edge there so not right on the edge but just a, a couple of uh, an eighth of the ed inch away or a couple of millimeters away from the edge so i'm going to make like a rectangle and i'll be back here in a second all right so there you can see i've got this rectangle you can see um how close um I went to the edge so not overly close that'll also stop the fraying from going on now if you want you can cut off uh, the excess over there and I think I'll need a sharper pair of scissors um, so I've got my fabric scissors um, you can cut off however much you want to cut off um, and then you can encourage that to um, fray again so it's not overly um, too far from the edge there and then again on this side so I don't want it too um, fat there um, and there we go we've got a bit of a an edge so that's that's a little bit better um, it's awkward to cut that straight all right so there we go now we've got something that's going to lie absolutely flat um, over our page so there we go and we've got both of the openings on the same side so that's a, a plus let me just take this all out of the way there we don't need this anymore so let me turn that off okay so then it's just a case of um, getting our decoration and everything done we've got the crux of the matter here done um, so now we just want to really quickly finish off the rest of this okay so what we want to do now is let's get in our um, little uh, what do you call these little envelopey um, pockets that's the word pockets gosh I tell you when I'm whenever I'm videoing I don't remember half the names of things I don't know what's wrong with me you know the words elude me 
Okay, so as I said, is I've just taken some vellum, I've measured from there to there, and I've decided on a, on a width, which is probably about two inches, um, and this is the width of here. I've made it slightly, ever so slightly narrower, and this is just easy. I'm trying to keep the bulk down on this one. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, hold aside, you don't want glue on. I'm using this uh, PVA glue. Um, purely because it dries clear and um, it's got a nice thin nozzle but any glue will work that you're happy to use okay so that's that and I'm going to fit that just there like that and that's perfect okay right same on the other side And you know the fabric doesn't have to be the muslin or calico fabric. You can use any kind of medium weight cotton, um, anything that you have. Um, it'll give it a nice print if you've got nice prints like a Liberty of London or you've got other sub lovely vintage prints, use that. As long as it's not too thick, um, you know, you could make some really interesting like having pretty tabs. Um, it just give if, if you have a nice spotty one that would look nice too. So just have a look at what you have. Okay, so we've got our internal pockets there, which we'll fill in a minute. I want to get on now and just decorate the outside here. So um, I've got a couple of my die cuts. You can use your fussy cuts, whatever you you have on hand. I have these on hand. Um, so um, what I want to do is. I'm um, going to stick one that's green and one that's like a pinky colour. Oh, come on. And just going to uh, think what do I want with what. So we'll put the green one down first. I love this green and I love these dyes. These are the Tim Holtz Sizzix. Thinlets wildflower dyes. You get uh, the wildflower and the wildflower stems. So um, have a look and see. I got mine off Amazon. You can get these pretty much any online uh, craft shop or online shop. So I'm going to stick this one with its, I nearly said its wing, <laughs> its stem just slightly and some of its petals slightly over i'll trim off that over there and i'm not sure if i want to put uh, i'll get this off this is not a wildflower this is just some other random thing that i had i think i'm just going to put that one over there and that one will be fine so this was a cheap thing that came with one of my leaf off ebay for like two quid for a pack um, and it's been quite handy really when I wanted something a little bit smaller for the life of me it came from China I don't know what it's called so I'm going to just let that one go up a little bit like that yeah I'm going to cut that off there but I'm quite happy with that and then oh, sorry and then while that's drying there we're going to stick on something on this side and just thinking of the order I want to put this in. So I want to put that and then that, yes. So back to my uh, Tumult Sizzix Wildflower dies. Thank goodness for these little nozzles. I, use, I can do this with my uh, Fabri-Tac. Uh, I came quite good at doing it, but this is so much easier and gets into all the little areas, which is fantastic. So, can't go wrong with that. I think I'm going to go and watch a good bit of TV tonight. I haven't already watched much TV this week, um, except for Outlander, which is on Amazon Prime anyway. Um, but I think I need to go and watch a good film. It's a Friday night tonight. 
well it won't be when you watch this it'll be saturday morning but um yeah i'm looking forward to going relaxing in my nice chair and just chilling for a bit after this oh, while i upload it <laughs> that is something else well i've got to edit it as well so it'll take me the rest of the night really any good films i've been um uh listening to my favorite thing at the moment well not at the moment but for a long time i love reading but um was getting behind on my books a few months ago because of loving my crafting obviously but very into audio books and now i can craft and listen to my books <laughs> well i'm going through so many books best thing since sliced bread because you can do two things at once so how awesome is that um so yeah i've um i sort of am going through a book every two three days it's starting to become quite expensive <laughs> so um yeah but if you like your reading oh reading um listening to that when you're driving in traffic well, I used to do that a lot when I was um, not working from home or, you know, um, uh, listening while I'm crafting. Well, addictive. I've listened to all the Outlander books now, eight books. Each one's about 1,400 pages. Um, took me years to read them. But since audiobooks... I went through the last three in about two months, which was amazing for me. It's so much better than watching TV all the time. I, lo I love books and the escapism of it. So that just gave me the perfect opportunity. Right, I just want a little um, pearl. I don't spring out of my... I don't know why my pokey tools disappeared, so I'm resorting to other measures today. You know, um, I heard Carol say, um, Carol uh, Parker, she was saying uh, she's got the pixie scissor pixies uh, uh, in, they've moved in. I definitely have those and they've even taken my pokey tool. So I'm not very happy with the pixies at the moment or fairies. They must be elves because they're naughty. Yeah, definitely moved in here. I never find the scissors and I've got loads of pears. Um, and just everything disappears when you're wanting it. So just putting a little word there. I like a little bit of a word. Um, and we'll put one over here. Uh, these come from um, Amity Bloom, these words. You know, it's part of a... A thing like this which I think is French ephemera um, so I'm just using that oh, and then we needed a bit of a goodie over there um, sorry so let's get one hold of one of these smaller one <laughs> these come from China <laughs> in case somebody's asking me God only knows. I've had them for ages. Right, so we've got that over there. We've got it all looking good. Um, that's all great. Yeah. Lovely. All we want now is to put in our bits and pieces. So I've made two of these. These are offcuts from, again, um the Nagasaki papers and I will say ladies because two of you contact or two or three of you contacted me about Nagasaki papers not being available at um, Antique Papery anymore anyway I emailed Sherry and she has <laughs> yes today she did actually 
yesterday put them back online so if you were looking for nagasaki papers which i do like to use a lot she has relisted them but only for the month of may so please go and have a look um it is a set of six papers they're 150 i think um that's pounds and it's the so beautiful such a beautiful set of pages as um carol will tell you as well so Sherry's great. If there is something that has been sold out on her website, um, I know myself, I've contacted her a few times and she has, um, she'll often put it back on because people will contact her and ask her. So she's quite open to that kind of thing. So there we've got a card in there. And here we need to put this one in here. When we open it, that is. Right. Okay. So that's that one. Like that. That's pretty. And then all we need to do now is put some goodies on the inside because we've got our little vellum pockets on the inside. So if we open that up there, I have got these. Um, they're called Herbal Law journal cards. Um, like that and these are from louise heinzel um herbal law it's called so louise heinzel on etsy um and this is the first time i've used some of her stuff but she's got some beautiful digital kits and i was looking for something a bit in this line so if you're looking for something like this go and have a look at her stuff i'll try and put the link if i remember and these are just um from my porch prints i think um from i think this is grandma's attic ephemera if i'm not right i've just put on some washi tape and some um fabric on the top there and stitched around so that's what i'm putting in here so it's not too bulky at all quite thin that's going to be how it ends up and as i was saying to you earlier if you've got a journal page and you want something on it like that, um, just put this over like that, over your page. It will actually need to be this side. <laughs> it could be any side, you just turn it around um, like that. And there you go. That would hang nicely on your page, just like that. Look at that. Um, and you've got something on both sides of your page, which is really lovely. And it looks very nice. This is my Porch Prince avocado dyed pages. So if you wanted to leave that page as it is in your journal, because you could write on there, that gives it a nice bit of decoration as well. So I quite like that. Okay, so Dawn, there you go. That's what I suggest to for you to do with your CD um, pockets. Um, I was looking at something else as well, where you could actually fold them in half decorate them fold it in half have a nice little image um, like something with bees or something in there and use that as a pocket as well dawn so i thought that you could put that onto your page as well like that and have something like that so that's another idea you could also um, decorate this have an um, image on both sides and cover those with scraps as well and put this um wrapping around your page like that it's another thing you could do something a bit different so i just thought i'd give you a couple of ideas um of a different way to use them other than the usual way which we just slip something in and have it folding out so there we go ladies i hope you've enjoyed that um doing that with me today um and i hope to see you again very soon i will try and get another video in um either sunday or monday um i'll try i'll see how i go but thank you so much for sharing this with me i hope you've had a chance to craft along um and i look forward to seeing what you make as as i always say don't be afraid to link me in somewhere whether it's your blog spot your instagram your facebook whatever it is and i'll definitely i love seeing what you guys make it makes my day. Thank you so much. And I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye.